Good morning. We welcome you to God's house this morning on a Memorial Day weekend. Uh, so happy Memorial Day as we celebrate all those uh, who served and uh, now rest from their labors, uh, keeping us uh, safe and, and giving us the freedom that we have. Uh, so just a reminder that following service, uh, you can grab some coffee, have a little fellowship, and then we will head out to the cemetery uh, to just do our cemetery liturgy uh, out at the cemetery. And then just a reminder... Uh, tomorrow, you can head out to the cemetery, too, probably between, what, like 7.30 and 10. They should be there. <laughs> Bring a donut. And uh, then uh, the Legion will be out there to do uh, their service as well. Uh, this morning is uh, Holy Trinity Sunday, uh, so we will say the Athanasian Creed. Uh, and just be reminded of, of who Jesus and, and God and the Holy Spirit are, uh, three in one, yet uh, one in three. Uh, so we'll be looking at the story of Nicodemus and, and Jesus, that conversation, uh, being born again uh, and being born from above, uh, as uh, you kind of can translate that, of what that means uh, for us uh, and that conversation between Nicodemus and Jesus. So we'll look more at that this morning. Uh, before we begin, let's just begin the word of prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you for... Uh, just the opportunity to come and be reminded uh, that we are yours, that we are born from above. We are part of your kingdom. Uh, and so let us just continue to be your disciples, uh, knowing that we are yours and that we get to go and tell the world uh, about who you are and what you have done uh, through your son, the love that you have for the whole world, uh, giving us your son uh, to die for us and to give us that forgiveness and eternal life. And so let us just continue to proclaim and be disciples of you uh, in this world. It's in your name we pray. Amen. I invite you to stand and say hello to all those around you. Uh, we welcome you to service. Welcome to all those that are online this morning. <laughs> welcome to church. And then we stay standing for our first song, Holy, Holy, Holy.
We make our beginning in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Whoever desires to be saved must, above all, hold the Catholic faith. Whoever does not keep it whole and undefiled will, without doubt, perish eternally. And the Catholic faith is this, that we worship one God in Trinity and Trinity in unity neither confessing the persons nor dividing the substance. For the Father is one person, the Son is another, and the Spirit is another. But the Godhead of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit is one, the glory equal, the majesty co-eternal. Such as the Father is, such is the Son, and such is the Holy Spirit. The Father uncreated, the Son uncreated, the Holy Spirit uncreated. The Father infinite, the Son infinite, the Holy Spirit infinite. The Father eternal, the Son eternal, the Holy Spirit eternal. And yet there are not three eternals, but one eternal. Just as there are not three uncreated or three infinites, but one uncreated and one infinite. In the same way, the Father is almighty, the Son almighty, and the Holy Spirit almighty. And yet there are not three almighties, but one almighty. So the God is Father, the Son is God, the Holy Spirit is God. And yet there are not three gods, but one God. So the Father is Lord, the Son is Lord, the Holy Spirit is Lord. And yet, yet there are not three Lords, but one Lord. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let's take a moment of silence to reflect on our sinful nature and just our need for our Savior. Let us then confess our sins to God, our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you and for his sake, forgives you all your sins. As a ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you have given us grace to acknowledge the glory of the eternal Trinity by the confession of a true faith and to worship the unity and the power of the divine majesty. Keep us steadfast in this faith and defend us from all ad adversities. For you, O Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, live and reign, one God, now and forever. You may be seated. And so as we end our month of May, we are just reminded of that uh, love that we have from God, uh, that we are forgiven and that we then go out and give that forgiveness to the world, uh, being kind to one another. Uh, so let us just say this uh, verse uh, twice this morning. Be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ. Ephesians 4, 32. 
And one more time. Be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another. As God in Christ forgave you. Ephesians 4, 18. Today is Holy Trinity, the first Sunday after Pentecost. The festival half of the church year, which has confessed the saving events in the life of our Lord, now gives way to the part of the church year in which we hear his teaching. From the Old Testament reading from Isaiah, we witness a glimpse of the glory of the Lord, the God of Sabbath, whose power is chiefly known in showing mercy. In the epistle from Acts of the Apostles, we hear another part of the Pentecost sermon of Peter, attesting to the revelation of Jesus as both Lord and Christ. In the Gospel, according to John, we hear Jesus' conversation with Nicodemus. And within this, we hear the most beloved and familiar verse of Scripture. An Old Testament reading this morning comes from the book of Isaiah, the sixth chapter. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up. And the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him stood the seraphim. Each had six wings. With two he covered his face, and with two he covered his feet, and with two he flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the foundations of the threshold shook at the voice of him who called, and the house was filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, for I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphim flew to me, having in his hand a burning coal that he had taken with tongs from the altar. And he touched my mouth and said, Behold, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away and your sin atoned for. And I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? Then I said, Here am I, send me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Epistle reading this morning comes from the book of Acts, the second chapter. Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them. Men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with mighty works and wonders and signs that God did through him in your midst, as you yourselves know. This Jesus delivered up according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God. You crucified and killed by the hands of lawless men. God raised him up, loosening the pangs of death because it was not possible for him to be held by it. For David says concerning him, I saw the Lord always before me, for he is at my right hand that I may not be shaken. Therefore my heart was glad and my tongue rejoiced. My flesh also will dwell in hope, for you will not abandon my soul to Hades or let your Holy One see corruption. You have made known to me the path of life. You will make me full of gladness with your presence. Brothers, I may say to you with confidence about the patriarch David that he both died and was buried, and his tomb is with us to this day. Being therefore a prophet, and knowing that God had sworn with an oath to him that he would set one, send one, set one of his descendants on his throne, he foresaw and spoke about the resurrection of the Christ, that he was not abandoned to Hades, nor did his flesh see corruption. This Jesus God raised up, and of that we are all witnesses. Being therefore exalted at the right hand of God, and having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, he has poured out this, that you yourselves are seeing and hearing. For David did not ascend into the heavens, but he himself says, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. Let all the house of Israel therefore know for certain that God has made him both Lord and Christ, this Jesus whom you crucified. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
Can Lena and Sarah come and join me for a children's message? Good morning. How are we this morning? Good. Well, welcome to church. Um, in just a little bit, you are going to hear a story about a man by the name of Nicodemus. And Nicodemus was, let's just say he was kind of hungry. Not hungry for food, but hungry for a little bit of knowledge. He was a little confused. For he knew about Jesus. He had seen Jesus do signs and, and wonders. Um, and, and he came to him at night to ask him some questions. And, and Nicodemus reminds me a little bit about a story. Have you ever read the story, The Very Hungry Caterpillar? You just read it to me this week, Lena. You didn't? Oh, some time ago. And, and we know the story of The Hungry Caterpillar, right? Okay, he starts off as what? A worm? A little caterpillar? Is that why it's called The Very Hungry Caterpillar? Okay, good. So he starts off as a caterpillar, and, and the first day he takes a little nibble of something, and, and the next day he takes a little more and more and more until he is, he's got a bellyache, doesn't he? He eats everything. He's a fat caterpillar. And then on Sunday he eats a little leaf, and then what happens? What does he go and do? Yeah, makes himself into a cocoon, a chrysalis, and then two weeks later he becomes what? Butterfly. He is changed, isn't he? Yeah. And, and so in this text you're going to hear in a little bit, Jesus talks about kind of being changed. Uh, he talks about how we are our people here. Uh, but in order to, to go into heaven, you need to be born again. And, and Jesus is reminding us that, that when we are baptized, when we hear God's word, we are changed. Uh, we become his children. And so we then become born from above. We are part of God's family. Um, and so every time we see a baptism, we see that someone is, is changed. Their life has changed. They become a children of God, a child of God, and their life forever is changed. Just like that caterpillar. That caterpillar's life is never going to be the same again, is it? Because now it's what? A butterfly. A beautiful butterfly. And so, as Jesus reminds us of being born again, being baptized, growing in that word, our lives are changed as well. And so we rejoice in the fact that we are his children. And so in honor of, of Eric Carl, who passed away this past week, did you know that? Of course. Yeah. Uh, we are reminded of that, that story. Uh, of the very hungry caterpillar. And so when we hear that, we can think about how we are changed as well uh, because of what Christ has done for us in the word and spirit. And so let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for sending your spirit to us, that our lives are forever changed because of that baptism, uh, that we are part of your family. And let us continue to proclaim the risen Savior uh, to the world and allow their lives to be changed as well. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Thank you very much for coming up. I appreciate it. So I invite you to stand if you are able, and let us say the verse together. Alleluia. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. Hallelujah. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the third chapter. Glory to you, Lord. Now there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is within him. Jesus answered him, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. 
Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I say to you, you must be born again. The wind blows where it wishes, and you hear its sound, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, How can these things be? Jesus answered him, Are you the teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Truly, truly, I say to you, we speak of what we know and bear witness to what we have seen. But you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except he who descends from heaven, the Son of Man. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son to the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Christ. We continue with our next song, Glory Be to God the Father. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God, our Heavenly Father, and through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who makes us born again, be with you all. Amen. You may be seated. Well, today, as we celebrate Holy Trinity Sunday, and we say that long creed, the Athanasian Creed, it talks about that mystery, that mystery of how God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are one, yet three. And that mystery of faith. For the ways of God are beyond our understanding. But at the heart of this mystery is a love. 
a love that saves us. Some mysteries certainly are puzzles to be solved. Others are questions to be answered. But sometimes we just can't figure them out. And that's okay. We don't understand the Trinity. We can't wrap our minds around this idea of the Trinity. And even though we confess it and we talk about it, especially in the Athanasian Creed, it still is puzzling for us. And so this brings us to our text this morning from the Gospel of John, this conversation between Nicodemus and Jesus. For as we know, Nicodemus is a teacher of the law, a respected man within the Israel community. And he comes to Jesus at night. And he says to Jesus, Rabbi, understanding that he is a teacher, he, he's someone special. For we know that you are a teacher that has come from God. For no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. Now from this statement, Nicodemus, I think, has a, a basic understanding of Jesus. Word has gotten around about him, what he has done. And even though in, in John's gospel, the really the only sign that Jesus has done so far is turning water into wine. He certainly talks about the, the cleansing of the temple and how he will raise that temple up in three days. But word has gotten about around about him, about these signs. People like to see things. They marvel at him. They like what Jesus is doing, these, these signs that he is doing. They're, it's proving to them that what he is talking about is, is true. But this question that Nicodemus asked Jesus is a sight question. It is not a faith question. I want to see it. Prove it to me. We're like that as well. We want proof. We want people to tell us and show us how things can be done. And if we hear it from people, numerous people, we, we tend to believe it. But notice that Jesus doesn't answer his question in the way that we would think it is. I'm sure Nicodemus probably scratches his head and said, I ask you a question and you give me something completely different. For Jesus says to him, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Notice that Jesus is trying to take the sight question that Nicodemus asked and turn it Toward faith. Believe in me. But Nicodemus doesn't get it. For he says, how can I? I'm old. How can I get back into my mom's womb again and be born again? Now the tough part about translating is that this word here born again, can also be translated as born from above. And notice Nicodemus, when he hears Jesus speak about this, he gets caught up on the again part. And Jesus, I think, is leaning toward born from above. Doesn't that change things a little bit? You must be born from above. Not again, but born from above. And so Jesus continues to teach to him, pushing him in the direction of faith and not sight. Jesus says, truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and of spirit, 
He cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I said to you, you must be born again. The wind blows where it wishes and you hear its sound, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. Now when I look at Nicodemus and this interaction from him, I see G Nicodemus as an admirer of Jesus. I don't really see him as a disciple of Jesus. And when you think about it, in the world today, aren't there a lot more admirers of Jesus? Most everyone in this world has heard about Jesus, who he is. I think they wonder about him a little bit. They hear about him doing miracles, walking on water, turning water into wine, raising people from the dead. But they're all about sight. They want to see it, to believe it. And even though we have sight, we have it right here, they don't take it that next step and really believe it, have that faith to believe in it. And so when you look at this interaction between Jesus and Nicodemus, you see that Jesus is trying to take him from an admirer of who he is to make him to be a disciple, to be someone that is born from above. Now when we hear this conversation between Jesus and Nicodemus, we get it. We understand it. We understand when Jesus is talking about being born of the Spirit, that he is talking about baptism. Because we know the whole story. We know what happens in chapter 4 and 5 and so on in John, leading up to the resurrection, leading up to Acts, where Jesus ascends into heaven, and the disciples go out. We get the whole picture. We continue to be a disciple. We understand that the baptism that we have is a washing of us. It's a regeneration. It's our old Adam drowning and our new Adam rising. We receive that spirit. But still, it's a mystery. It's a mystery because we don't understand how the Holy Spirit works. And sometimes we like to be people of sight still. We would like to preach the word to someone and watch them turn into a follower of Jesus. Isn't that right, Alvin? Those baker people. <laughs> they just teach and teach and teach and they don't understand. Sometimes that's how it is with the Holy Spirit, too. Sometimes we plant that. Someone else waters it and watches it grow. And we hate to admit it, but we still sometimes are sight people. We want to see it, don't we? We want to see the works of our labor turn into something. But that's the mystery. And that's what Jesus is getting at. Have faith. Have faith in me. Have faith in the work of the Spirit and what it will do. It's not about you. It's about me. It's about the work of the Helper about the Holy Spirit. We understand about life, about how it is abundant, about how it is gracious, freely giving, how God is able to enter into a sinful world to share the forgiveness, to send His Son to die for us. hear those words that whoever believes in Jesus shall not perish but have eternal 
life. Today, we rejoice in that mystery of how Jesus works, how the Holy Spirit works. Pointing to the kingdom of God. Notice how many times Jesus points to the kingdom of God, where we belong, what that Holy Spirit does, about what it means to be born again and born into that kingdom of God. For we are people that are born of the flesh. We live here in a broken world. But when we enter to the waters of holy baptism, the Holy Spirit comes into us and we are changed. We are now that beautiful caterpillar and a very hungry caterpillar. Jesus points to him that he is the one that will be lifted up. All eyes will be on him. And when eyes are on him, we are saved. Believe in him. That's all. Because of Jesus that we are born again. We are born from above. And so we live by faith. We live by hope in Jesus. We don't need signs to see with our own eyes. We have enough right here. Do these words in this book point us to what is truly important? And that's Jesus. For God so loved the world that he sent Jesus into this fallen, broken world to be lifted up, lifted up on a cross to die for us so that you and I can have eternal life. So that when we die here, we know where we are going. We're not perishing. No, but we have eternal life. Live by faith. Faith in Him. To God be the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us now... Join together in confessing more of the Athanasian Creed. Let us stand if you are able. Just as we are compelled by the Christian truth to acknowledge each distinct person as God and Lord, so also are we prohibited by the Catholic religion to say that there are three gods or lords. The Father is not made, nor created, nor begotten by anyone. The Son is neither made nor created, but begotten of the Father alone. The Holy Spirit is of the Father and of the Son, neither made nor created, nor begotten, but proceeding. Thus there is one Father, not three fathers, one Son, not three sons, one Holy Spirit, not three Holy Spirits. And in this Trinity, none is before or after another. None is greater or less than another. But the whole three persons are co-eternal with each other and co-equal, so that in all things, as has been stated above, the Trinity in unity and unity in Trinity is to be worshipped. Therefore, whoever desires to be saved must think thus about the Trinity. And let us join together in the prayers of the church. Uh, and we especially lift up uh, the family of Steve Bakken, uh, the brother-in-law of Gail Klug and, and Dick Klug, uh, who passed away this past week. Uh, and so we lift them up, uh, remind them about the hope 
and comfort that is found in the resurrection. Um, and so we continue to lift them up uh, as they mourn the passing uh, of their uh, family member. And so we join together in the prayers of the church. Blessed be the kingdom of our God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed, Blessed be his kingdom, kingdom now and forever, to the end of all the ages. Grant us grace, O Lord, that we trust in you and confess without fear the name of the triune God with which we are marked in baptism. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Grant to us grace, O Lord, that we approach the mystery of your presence with awe, confident of your mercy that forgives our sins, and comforted by your power that delivers us from everlasting death. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Grant to us grace, O Lord, that your church be firmly established in this faith, united in the truth of your word, and served by faithful pastors and church workers who will faithfully minister to us in your name. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Grant to us, O grace, O Lord, that missionaries far and near be protected by your power and blessed in their service, so that many may hear and hearing, believe in your name. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Grant to us grace, O Lord, that those who suffer afflictions of body and mind be delivered according to your will, sustained by your presence and delivered to everlasting life, especially those in this congregation, for Chase, Cody, Karen, Nicole, Rodney, Barb, Jim, John, Brian, Sarah, Donald, Roger, Joanne, Dawn, Arlene, Wayne, Lee, Marlis, and those we name in our hearts. We also lift up the family of Steve Bach and Gail and Dick's brother-in-law who passed away this week. Comfort them with the hope that is found in the resurrection. Lord, in your mercy, Grant to us grace, O Lord, that knowing your goodness and creation, we use your gifts wisely and for the benefit of all people and bring to you the tithes and offerings of a grateful heart. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Grant to us grace, O Lord, that we approach your table in humble repentance and receive in faith the very body and blood of our Savior in this Holy Communion. Lord, in your mercy, Grant to us grace, O Lord, to remember those who went before us with the sign of faith and now rest from their labors. And guide us that we faithfully confess your name until we join them in your near presence forevermore. Lord, in your mercy. Lord Jesus, you give us so much to rejoice in, especially those who celebrate a birthday this week. For Cole, Sarah, Dawson, Tammy, Kalia, and Ella. We also thank you for your continued blessings upon marriages, especially to Lance and Janelle and Steve and Marcy, who celebrate another year of marriage this week. Lord, in your mercy, grant to us grace, O Lord, that we find contentment of heart and that we know the riches of your mercy as our greatest treasure in life and hope and our hope in death. Lord, in your mercy. Blessed be the kingdom of our God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be his kingdom, now and forever, to the end of all the ages. You may be seated as we offer up our offerings. Uh, usually during this time we pass the plate around, uh, but if you didn't uh, put in your offering when you came in, the plates are located there. Uh, also, if you are looking uh, for ways to, um, another way of giving, you can certainly do that uh, electronically. Um, and so if you go to our website, uh, you can sign up uh, there uh, for online giving, um, and it comes out whenever you would like it. Um, so there's more information. There's a, a slide right there about it. Um, and uh, right now, I just ask that you uh, sit back and enjoy this uh, little video just about uh, Memorial Day.
So I just want to let you know about what is happening uh, this morning. Uh, we're going to start to transition uh, back up to the rail. Uh, if you are not comfortable coming back up to the rail, um, you still have your individual communion kits, uh, and so I will commune you uh, if you stay at your your at the pews there uh, after we have communed uh, those here. Uh, but how this is going to work is you will bring up your individual communion kits. Um, if you have trouble uh, opening those up, we have them up here already opened up for you, and we will give those to you. Uh, but what we are going to be doing is, since there are three sides to the altar here, uh, we will have three families come up at a time. Uh, and so we will have an usher that will kind of help uh, guide those up, uh, and then we'll commune uh, with those here, uh, and then you can head back to your seat. Uh, so if you are not c comfortable coming up yet, um, you may stay at your pews there, and we will still commune you uh, that way. Uh, but for those that are ready to kind of start coming back up to the rail, uh, we invite you to come up uh, to the Lord's table here uh, and, and commune with us uh, up here. Uh, and so uh, just kind of, we'll kind of guide you through this as we kind of get back into things. Uh, so just be patient with us, um, and we'll kind of get you up here uh, if you are ready. And so I invite you to stand if you are able as we prepare to come to the Lord's table. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and at all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, who with your only begotten Son and the Holy Spirit are one God, one Lord. In the confession of the only true God, we worship the Trinity in person and the unity and substance of majesty co-equal. And therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying... heaven and earth, we praise you and give you thanks for the mercy you have shown to us, to those you created, sending your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and to be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-sufficient sacrifice of his body and blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood as he bids us do in his own testament. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this as often as you eat it in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave to them and said, Take and drink. This cup is a New Testament in my blood which is shed for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Hear us as we pray in the name of Jesus and with the words he has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. 
The peace of the Lord be with you always. You may be seated. forgiveness of all your sins. And now having received Christ's true body and blood, may he strengthen you, preserve you in your faith until life everlasting departs and our risen Lord's peace. Your sins are forgiven. given and shed for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. And now, having received Christ's true body and blood, may it strengthen you and preserve you in your faith until life everlasting depart in our risen Lord's peace. Your sins are forgiven. Amen.
to come back beside of the wafer and take and eat. This is Christ's true body given and shed for you. is Christ's true blood given and shed for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. And now having received Christ's true body and blood may it strengthen you and preserve you in your faith until life everlasting depart in our risen Lord's peace. Your sins are forgiven. Amen. So I invite you now to stand if you are able as we finish uh, confessing the Athanasian Creed. But it is also necessary for everlasting salvation that one faithful will believe the incarnation of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, it is the right faith that we believe and Confess that our Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God, is the same time of God and man. He is God, begotten from the substance of the Father before all ages. And he is man, born from the substance of his mother in this age. Perfect God and perfect man, composed of a rational soul and human flesh. Equal to the Father with respect to his divinity, less than the Father with respect to his humanity. Although he is God and man, he is not two, but one Christ. One, however, not by the conversion of the divinity into flesh, but by the assumption of the humanity into God. One altogether, not by confusion of substance, but by unity of person. For as the rational soul and flesh is one man, so God and man is one Christ, who suffered for our salvation, descended into hell, rose again the third day from the dead, ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father, God Almighty, from whence he will come to judge the living and the dead. At his coming all people will rise again with their bodies, and give an account concerning their own deeds. And those who have done good will enter into eternal life, and those who have, not, who have done evil into eternal fire. This is the Catholic faith. Whoever does not believe it faithfully and firmly cannot be saved. And so let us join together in saying our sending prayer. Be reminded that there are many out there that admire Jesus, know of him by his works, but truly don't know of him. And so let us go out then and tell them who Jesus is, to become a disciple, to be born from above, uh, so that they can enter into the joys of eternal life with us. And so we pray, Lord, lay some soul upon my heart, and love that soul through me. And may I ever do my part 
to win that soul for thee. And now receive our Lord's benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. We conclude with our final hymn of Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks. And we sing, God bless our native land. be seated for just a couple announcements. Just a few things to draw your attention to. Uh, so far, uh, we have raised uh, a little over $15,000 for uh, the roof. Uh, so we're almost to our goal of 50%. Uh, of course, uh, if we come above that, uh, which is fantastic, um, there are other things that we need to kind of start looking at uh, of keeping up with maintenance. Uh, but that's kind of where we're at so far. Uh, so if you still want to give uh, to the roof uh, fundraiser, uh, certainly drop a check off uh, in the offering plates. Just put uh, roof found fundraiser on there, uh, and we will get that uh, to the right account. Uh, also, just a reminder that following service here, I will head out to the uh, cemetery. Uh, at the exits are kind of a sheet uh, with that liturgy. Uh, so you can pick that up, and we'll meet you out at the cemetery uh, at like... Hmm, Let's start at like 10.30 um, with that uh, to get that going. So you can kind of come in. Uh, I think Kurt made some coffee. Did Kurt or, or did you win, win that battle? Oh. No, Kurt made it. Okay, so it should be good. <laughs> um, and, and join us for a little fellowship, and then we'll head out uh, to the cemetery for that. All right, a few things to let you know about. Um, Friday, June 11th, we are having a youth group lock-in. Um, so parents, you should have gotten an email about that. Please fill out the Google form to register um, for that event. Then um, on June 17th, that's a Thursday, we are having a family fun night here at church. So we're going to serve dinner. And then um, each month we have a theme. And so this month's theme is family bucket lists. And so we have an activity that goes with that. So um, make sure to join us for that on June 17th. And then on the 18th, join us for a Red Hawks game. Um, so tickets are $10. There are fireworks after that game. Um, so if you'd like to join us for that, you can sign up on the bulletin board. Um, and we will pray for good weather. Lena, you want to join us? Good. <laughs> Great. Um, that is all I have. Perfect. Uh, before we go, uh, we just have a, a short video here, uh, just kind of going along with the Memorial Day uh, theme here of, um, at Sam Rich's funeral. Uh, they, the Legion kind of came out and did uh, taps and then kind of uh, a special service uh, for her with that. So we just have that so that you can uh, uh, watch and, and then you are free to go. Have a blessed rest of your day and God's peace.
Blessed Memorial Day weekend. Uh, Godspeed. 